The wind howled through the desolate hills, carrying the scent of decay from the old prison that stood at their peak. Uh, for years, the prison had been abandoned, a place of whispered legends and fearful avoidance. It had been closed down abruptly in the early 1980s, under strange and unexplained circumstances. The last remaining guards had left in a hurry, not even bothering to clear out their personal belongings, and the cells still held the rotting remnants of life that had once filled them. Local lore suggested the prison was haunted, cursed, or worse. No one dared approach it. No one, except for Tom and his friends. Tom was the type who craved adventure. Ghost stories and haunted places thrilled him, and he often dragged his friends along for midnight explorations of abandoned locations. That's how they ended up standing outside the rusted iron gates of Hollow Creek Penitentiary, naft staring at the dark silhouette of the prison as the full moon bathed it in eerie light. This place doesn't look too bad, Tom said with a grin. He was already making his way to the gate, his flashlight beam flickering against the rusted metal. I don't know, Tom, Lisa whispered, clutching her coat tightly. There's something off about it. Come on, you don't actually believe those ghost stories, do you? Tom scoffed. But even Tom couldn't deny the strange, unsettling aura surrounding the prison. The air felt heavier here like it carried the weight of something old and malicious. The others exchanged uneasy glances, but they followed Tom inside as the gate creaked open under his push. The entrance yard was overgrown with weeds, and the prison walls loomed high above them. Their bricks cracked and stained with years of neglect. Tom led the way, pushing through the remnants of a security door that hung loosely from its hinges. Inside, it was worse. The stench of mold and rot filled the air, and the floor was littered with old papers, rotting wood, and pieces of metal. This way, Tom said, motioning to the left as they made their way deeper into the building. His voice echoed unnaturally in the emptiness. They wandered through the desolate corridors, past crumbling cells that still held rusted cots and faded graffiti scratched into the walls. I bet this place is crawling with rats, Mike muttered, shining his flashlight nervously from side to side. Nothing but rats and cobwebs, Tom said with a smirk. But as they moved deeper into the heart of the prison, something began to change. The air grew colder, unnaturally so. Their breath became visible, fogging up in front of them, and the faint hum of the outside world seemed to vanish, leaving behind only an oppressive silence. Lisa grabbed Mike's arm, her eyes wide with fear. It's freezing, she whispered. It's just an old building, Tom replied, though his bravado was slipping. Even he could sense that something wasn't right. His flashlight flickered, and for a brief moment, the darkness seemed to press in on them from all sides. Then they heard it, a faint, distant sound. It was hard to describe, almost like a low, raspy whisper carried on the wind. Tom stopped in his tracks, holding his hand up to silence the group. Did you hear that? Lisa asked, her voice trembling. I'm sure it's just the wind, Tom said, though he didn't sound sure at all. They moved forward cautiously now, the sound growing louder with each step. It wasn't the wind. It was more distinct, like the ragged breath of someone or something, lurking just beyond the edge of the darkness. The flashlight beam swept across the cells, revealing nothing but dust and decay. They reached a set of stairs leading down to the lower levels. Tom hesitated. We should check the basement, now, he said, but his voice lacked its usual confidence. Are you crazy? Mike asked. We should go back. This place isn't right. But Tom had already started down the stairs. The others reluctantly followed, the sense of dread tightening around them like a noose. The basement was pitch black, the air thick with dampness and the unmistakable stench of something long dead. As they reached the bottom, a metallic clanging sound echoed through the hall. They froze, flashlights darting frantically across the space. The source of the noise was a large metal door at the far end of the hall. It was slightly ajar, swaying as though it had just been forced open. Let's just leave, Lisa pleaded. But Tom shook his head. He was too deep into the mystery to back out now. Tom pushed the door open, and as it creaked back, a gust of icy air hit them. Beyond the door was a room, smaller than the others, lined with rusted shackles hanging from the walls. The floor was covered in dark stains, blood long since dried. In the center of the room stood an old chair facing away from them. Tom approached cautiously, his heart pounding in his chest. He slowly moved around the chair, and then he saw it, a figure slumped in the seat. 
It was dressed in a torn prison uniform, its skin pale and shriveled, its eyes wide open but clouded over in death. But then the figure moved. A low groan escaped its throat as its head slowly turned toward Tom. The eyes, though lifeless, seemed to lock on to his, and a raspy, tortured voice escaped its lips. You shouldn't have come here. Tom staggered back, his breath catching in his throat. The others screamed, the figure rising from the chair with unnatural jerking movements. It was no longer human, if it had ever been. Its limbs twisted and cracked as it shuffled toward them. They turned and ran, stumbling up the stairs, the sound of the creature's rattling breath echoing behind them. The corridors blurred into a nightmare of shadows and fear. Behind them, the thing that had once been a prisoner followed, relentless and hungry. They reached the entrance, slamming the door shut behind them. But as they stood outside, gasping for breath, they could still hear it. The sound of the creature's rasping whispers, growing louder in the darkness. They never spoke of what happened in that prison again, but Tom knew the truth. The prison wasn't empty. It never had been. Story number two. It was the dead of winter when I first heard about the old Oakwood prison, an abandoned penitentiary on the outskirts of town. Locals would whisper about it, the ones who dared speak of it at all. Built in the late 1800s, it had once housed the vilest criminals imaginable, but it had been shut down decades ago, abandoned to time and decay. No one knew why it had closed so suddenly. The prison just stopped operating one day, as if the building itself had swallowed everyone inside and demanded to be forgotten. I should have left it alone, but I was a curious soul, someone who sought adventure in the shadows of the past. And when I heard a rumor that no one who entered Oak would ever return the same, if they returned at all, I knew I had to go. That night, armed with only a flashlight, a notebook, and a camera, I made my way through the thick, snow-covered forest that surrounded the prison. The moon was a faint glow behind clouds, casting the bare trees in long, skeletal shadows. My breath puffed out in white clouds as I trudged through the drifts, the prison's looming silhouette growing larger as I approached. The gates of Oakwood were rusted, hanging loosely on their hinges. A large keep-out sign was barely visible under layers of ice and snow, but I ignored it. My heart raced as I passed through the gates, feeling an overwhelming sense of being watched. The main building towered before me, an enormous stone fortress with high walls and barred windows. I clicked on my flashlight and stepped inside. The air in the prison was colder than outside, and a musty stench clung to the walls. My footsteps echoed in the vast emptiness of the halls, the sound bouncing off walls that seemed to stretch into infinity. The cells were open, their iron bars rusted through. Empty beds, overturned tables, and broken chairs littered the ground. Yet, the place felt lived in, as if the prisoners had only just left. I wandered through the dark corridors, documenting everything, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. My flashlight flickered as I ventured deeper into the prison, and with each step, the atmosphere grew heavier. It was as though the very walls were breathing. I soon found myself standing in front of the solitary confinement wing, Death Row. The stories about this place were the most terrifying. Prisoners would be locked up for days, weeks, sometimes months with no human contact. Uh, some said the souls of the men who had gone insane here never left. The door creaked open as I pushed it, revealing a long, narrow hall lined with cells. My flashlight beam cut through the gloom, revealing nothing but the same abandoned decay. But something felt wrong. It felt different. The air here was thick, oppressive, as if the darkness had a physical presence. Suddenly, my flashlight went out. I was plunged into darkness, my breath caught in my throat. Frantically, I shook the flashlight, trying to coax it back to life. For a brief moment, it flickered back on, and I saw something that made my heart stop. At the far end of the hall, a figure stood, barely illuminated by the weak light. It was a man, or what used to be a man. His body was twisted, his face gaunt, with hollow eyes staring straight at me. The moment the light fully flickered back, he was gone. I blinked, unsure if I'd really seen him or if my mind was playing tricks. But then came the whispering, faint at first, a soft murmur that echoed through the halls. I strained to listen, trying to make out the words. It was like a chant, voices speaking in unison, but it wasn't in any language I recognized. Fear gripped me, tightening around my chest like a vice. I wanted to turn back, to leave, but my body wouldn't move. 
Instead, I found myself walking toward the sound, down the hall to where the figure had stood. As I approached the last cell, my flashlight flickered again. And there he was, standing inside the cell now, staring at me with those empty, hollow eyes. His mouth moved, but no sound came out. The whispers, however, grew louder, more frantic. It was as though they were trying to warn me, or perhaps lure me in. The door to the cell swung open on its own. I felt a cold breeze rush past me, and then in the distance a scream pierced the air. It was long and anguished, like someone was being tortured, and it echoed endlessly through the prison. Panicking, I turned and ran, my footsteps pounding against the cold stone floor. The whispers followed me, growing louder and more intense with every step. Shadows danced in my peripheral vision, shifting and twisting into human forms that stretched and reached out for me as I passed. I didn't stop until I was back at the entrance of the prison, gasping for air. My mind was reeling. What had I just witnessed? Who or what was that man? I hurried out of the building, but just as I passed through the gates, I heard it again. The whispering. Only this time it was clear. Just one voice. Come back! I turned, and standing at the gate, staring through the bars, was the man from the cell. He smiled, his lips curling into a hideous grin, and then vanished into the night. I fled back through the woods, my heart pounding in my chest, not daring to look back. I never returned to Oakwood, and I never told anyone what I saw. But sometimes in the dead of night, I can still hear the whispers calling out to me, and I know deep down that they'll never stop. Oakwood won't let me forget. It never lets anyone forget. Some prisons, after all, are never truly empty. Story number three. It was said to be the most secure prison in the state until the inmates began disappearing. No one escaped, at least not in the usual sense. They were simply gone. By the end of it, not a single prisoner or guard was left inside. Authorities abandoned the place, leaving it to decay. Now it stood as a hollow shell, surrounded by rumors of curses, haunting echoes, and things no one wanted to see. Twenty years later, four urban explorers, Mark, Jess, Andy, and Rachel, decided they would be the first to document what lay inside. A storm rumbled overhead as they reached the rusted gates. Great night for a ghost hunt, Andy joked, hoisting his camera. Jess shot him a look. You better not screw this up. I want good footage. Rachel shivered as the cold wind blew through the cracked walls. I don't know. Something feels off. You always say that, Mark said. He flashed her a grin, but even he couldn't hide his unease. They stepped through the gates, the chains on the fence rattling like a warning. Inside, the prison smelled of mold and iron. Water dripped from the cracked ceiling, and a strange, cold mist lingered near the floors. The walls bore messages scratched into the concrete. Don't trust it. It watches. Stay away from the cells. Andy pointed the camera down a long corridor. All right, everyone. Say hello to the Internet's creepiest new obsession, the empty prison. As they ventured deeper, their footsteps echoed unnaturally, as if someone or something was mirroring their every step. I swear I just heard something, Rachel whispered, gripping Mark's arm. It's just the echo, he muttered, though his voice wavered slightly. They reached the main block, where rows of cells stretched into darkness. Some doors hung open, others were sealed shut, but all of them carried an air of silent menace. The group paused in front of a particular cell. It looked no different from the others, but Rachel couldn't tear her eyes away. Guys, she said, her voice barely above a whisper, there's someone inside. They shined their flashlights inside. The beam revealed nothing but an old cot and a small metal toilet, yet Rachel swore she had seen the shadow of a figure. You're imagining things, Jess said, trying to sound casual, though she shifted uneasily. Suddenly, the door to the cell slammed shut with a deafening <laughs> clang, trapping Rachel inside. Rach! Mark shouted, rushing to the door and yanking on it. It won't budge. Rachel stumbled backward, panic rising. Get me out. I don't want to stay here. Andy pulled on the door with all his strength, but it was useless. It's like it's welded shut. As they struggled to free her, the lights on their cameras flickered. The temperature dropped further, and something strange began to happen. The scratching noises started. Not from their side of the door, but from inside the cell. Rachel turned slowly, heart pounding. On the far wall, something invisible was etching words into the concrete, right before her eyes. Let me out! Her scream echoed through the entire block. Mark bashed on the door with a metal pipe, desperately trying to break it open. Hold on, Rachel, 
Just hold on. But as Rachel backed away from the wall, she bumped into something or someone. Cold hands gripped her shoulders. Slowly, she turned her head, her breath catching in her throat. A gaunt figure stood behind her, its eyes sunken and black as coal, lips pulled back in a grin that was too wide for its face. You shouldn't have come here, it whispered, its voice a dry rasp. Rachel's scream was cut off as the figure placed a finger to its lips. Shh, they'll hear you. On the other side of the door, the others heard nothing but silence. Jess shook her head frantically. Something's wrong. This place isn't normal. We need to go. We can't leave her. Mark protested. Before they could argue further, the door swung open by itself with a loud creak. Inside, the cell was empty. No Rachel, no figure, just the same old cot and rusted toilet. Andy backed away, his voice shaking. This, this isn't right. Mark stepped inside, looking around wildly. Rachel, where are you? Jess yanked on his arm. We need to leave. Now! The group hurried back down the corridor, but something was different. Every door along the way stood wide open, and whispers drifted from inside the cells. Words of warning, begging, and threats. Run! Don't look back. You're already dead. Their footsteps quickened as they reached the entrance, but the gates that had stood wide, wide open earlier were now chained shut from the inside. No way, Andy whispered in disbelief, rattling the chains. They were open when we got here. Then they heard it, the unmistakable sound of footsteps. Someone or something was approaching from the dark. It wasn't just one set of footsteps, it was many. Mark shined his flashlight down the hall. Figures were emerging from the cells, silent, shadowy forms with hollow eyes, their faces twisted into expressions of rage, despair, and hunger. Run, Jess screamed. They turned and sprinted down the corridor, taking random turns, hoping to find another exit. But every path seemed to loop back to the same place. The central block, where rows of empty cells awaited them. Andy stumbled, and as Mark tried to help him up, they both froze. A sound filled the air, echoing off the walls, the slow, deliberate dragging of chains. Do you hear that? Andy whispered. From the darkness ahead, a figure appeared. It was Rachel. Ratch? Mark called out, hope flickering in his voice. But as she stepped closer, the hope drained from his face. This wasn't the Rachel they knew. Her eyes were black voids, and her mouth stretched into an unnatural smile. She dragged heavy chains behind her, their ends vanishing into the shadows. Why did you leave me? She whispered, her voice hollow and broken. Mark stepped back in horror. That's not her. That's not Rachel. Before they could react, the shadowy inmates closed in from all directions surrounding the group. The air grew thick with the sound of rattling chains, whispered curses, and soft, sinister laughter. The flashlights flickered again, and then the world plunged into darkness. In the pitch black, they heard Rachel's voice one last time, soft and distant. You belong here now. And with that, the gates to the empty prison swung shut, sealing them inside forever. The authorities who came days later found no sign of the explorers. Just like the prisoners before them, they had vanished without a trace. All that remained were their cameras, lying in the dust near the chained gate. The final recording ended with one chilling phrase etched into the wall, It never lets you leave. Story number four. The old penitentiary had been abandoned for over 50 years, standing like a silent monument on the outskirts of a forgotten town. Hollow Oaks Penitentiary was its name, a place of misery and punishment known for its brutal history and for the warden who ran it with an iron fist, Warden Lyle Matheson. Some said the prison was cursed, that those who entered were never quite the same. Uh, the locals knew better than to step foot anywhere near it after dark, claiming the place was haunted by those who never left including the infamous Warden Matheson himself. But not everyone believed in ghost stories. Three college students, Jake, Sarah, and Chris, had heard the legends about Hollow Oaks, and they were intrigued. Ghost hunting was their hobby, and they'd visited countless haunted sites, but nothing as notorious as the prison. So when the opportunity presented itself, they made the drive out to the forgotten penitentiary, determined to document the truth. Looks creepier than I imagined, Sarah said as they parked in front of the crumbling structure. The prison loomed above them, its broken windows like hollow eyes staring out over the overgrown courtyard. Rusted bars, collapsing towers, and the stench of decay greeted them as they stepped closer. Jake, the boldest of the group, grinned. This is going to be epic. We'll capture something real tonight. I can feel it. 
Chris, the tech geek of the trio, set up his camera and equipment as they approached the main entrance. Just be careful. This place is old, could collapse at any moment. The heavy metal doors screeched as they pried them open, revealing a dark, yawning interior. Their flashlights cut through the gloom, illuminating a vast, decaying lobby where the faint outlines of old desks and security checkpoints could still be seen. A chill hung in the air, but it was more than just the cold. There was something oppressive, like the walls themselves were watching. Let's get started, Jake said, already pushing forward. The trio moved through the decrepit halls, their footsteps echoing eerily in the silence. Broken cells lined both sides, their doors hanging from rusted hinges. Faint graffiti covered the walls, some of it recent, some of it decades old. The deeper they ventured, the more the air seemed to thicken, and the shadows grew darker, almost alive. Sarah's voice was shaky as she spoke into her camera. We're in what used to be cell block A. This is where they housed the most violent offenders. Suddenly, Chris stopped, his eyes fixed on a distant hallway. Did you see that? See what? Jake asked, annoyed. Chris pointed, his hand trembling. There was someone there, a shadow. Jake rolled his eyes. Probably just a rat or something. This place is full of them. But Chris wasn't convinced. His fingers tightened around the camera as they continued walking. The tension in the air grew, and an unnatural stillness settled over them. Then they heard it, faint at first, but unmistakable. Footsteps. Slow, deliberate footsteps echoing down the corridor behind them. Sarah froze, her face pale. That's not one of us. Jake spun around, his flashlight sweeping the hall. There was nothing, just the empty cells and the decaying walls. Maybe the wind's messing with the doors, Jake suggested, though his voice wavered. Chris glanced at his camera screen, frowning. I don't think so. The sound is too clear, too close. They continued deeper into the prison, past the shower block and into the mess hall. As they moved, the atmosphere grew more oppressive, like a weight pressing down on them. The stalent, every now and then they would catch movement in the corner of their eyes, shadows slipping between the bars, darting across the walls. The whispers started next. Low, unintelligible murmurs that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere all at once. Are you guys hearing that? Sarah asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Chris nodded, his face drawn tight. Yeah, I've got it on audio. It's like multiple voices, but I can't make out what they're saying. Jake, though shaken, tried to keep his composure. It's just the wind. Old buildings like this always make weird noises. But deep down, he knew it was more than that. They reached the warden's office. The door, once a symbol of authority and control, now hung loosely on its hinges. They stepped inside, and the room felt different, heavier, colder. A large desk sat in the middle, covered in dust, with old files scattered across the floor. Behind it, a large, faded portrait of Warden Matheson stared down at them, his eyes cold and unforgiving even in death. This was his office, Jake said softly. Warden Matheson ran this place like a dick dictator. Some say he was worse than the prisoners themselves. Sarah shuddered, her eyes fixed on the portrait. Do you think he's still here? Before Jake could answer, the temperature in the room plummeted. Their breath misted in front of them as a strange, creeping darkness began to gather in the corners of the office. It coalesced, forming a shape, tall and looming, standing behind the desk. Chris stumbled backward, his camera shaking. What the hell is that? The figure took a step step forward, its outline becoming more defined. The smell of decay filled the room, and with it came a feeling of pure, overwhelming dread. The shadowy form was unmistakable. The tall, broad-shouldered frame of Warden Matheson, still dressed in his dark uniform, his eyes glowing faintly in the gloom. You're not supposed to be here, a voice rasped, though. No mouth moved. It echoed in their minds, paralyzing them with fear. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind them trapping them in the room with the ghostly warden. The walls seemed to close in, the oppressive weight of the prison's long-dead souls pressing down on them. The shadow moved closer, its presence suffocating. Leave, or stay forever. The voice hissed. Panic set in. Chris fumbled for the door, but it wouldn't budge. Sarah screamed, her flashlight flickering as the darkness swirled around them. Jake tried to force the door open, but it was no use. Then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the shadow dissipated, melting back into the darkness. The door swung open, and the weight lifted. They didn't hesitate. They ran, their footsteps echoing through the halls as they fled the prison. The faint sound of laughter, 
cold, mocking, chasing them all the way out. They never spoke of Hollow Oaks again, but the memory of Warden Matheson's shadow stayed with them, haunting their dreams.